Hi, good afternoon guys. Um, I said yesterday when I was uh, I put the video on the uh, the build for the kit that I, that would be the last video. In actual fact, it's not the last video. Um, you'll notice that the speaker isn't connected. The speaker floating about in these, when you're working about them, can cause problems. Um, there's the speaker there, incidentally, but it's too dodgy if that was to short some, you know, the, the, the leads were to short on something, um, you could land up with problems. So what, during the time I've been working on this, the speaker has not been connected. And I think it's probably an advisable thing. Uh, try to do anything to um, make sure that you're not going to damage the, anything in the set. Also make sure your, your, your potential, your body isn't uh, full of static. Uh, use a wrist strap. Um, it, it should be okay once everything's bolted together. I don't think you should have a, a, an issue, but if you're, if you're separating boards and things like that and doing so on, yeah, you could have problems. So make sure your your ESD is, is okay. Okay, now, um, today I've spent a bit of time on this with the setting it up and doing so on. And what I have done today is I've, I've been working on the toroids. Um, <laughs> you're going to get a laugh with this, but uh, you maybe find, I don't know, maybe you won't. Uh, but you'll maybe find this interesting. The first thing I did, of course, is, as we know, we do the uh, the harmonic suppression. So all the, the harmonics have been done and they're all fine. And what I did also is I've just um, secured them with a little bit of hot melt in place. Um, it just so they, they're, they're more resilient and uh, not likely to move around. Uh, any movement, of course, will affect the, uh, uh, the point of the... Uh, maximum rejection so it's i think it's a good idea just to make sure they're a bit more uh, secure hot melt is fine it's impervious to to um uh many things uh, alcohol will take it off let's say ipa will take it off or acetone will remove it so it can be removed if easy enough if you need to do you need to go back so it's not a problem with that but it doesn't cause corrosion issues on the board or anything like that uh like some of the glues the japanese used uh in the 80s uh, Yesu FT480Rs and things like that that had that stuff that goes brittle and it causes corrosion anyway I did that and what I did find was this L15 I had problems with L15 there it is there that's the coil that I wound and I couldn't get any more than 150 micro henrys uh, we're looking for 200 and I thought mm, okay and I begin to suspect this wire this, this wire that comes with the kit um, it's, I don't have a, micro, a micrometer to measure it, uh, but it, it is quite thin. Uh, so I, I had this old line coil uh, from an old uh, an old TV set, which uh, has a nice copper wire, um, but it is thicker. And I started to use that. Now that seems to have improved the Q somewhat. In fact, you might be able to see if I open this out, I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, that's me zoomed in. Maybe not the best of backgrounds. Let me put a bit of paper down. Uh, you'll see it better. Hold on. Um, and one handed operations, they were good. <laughs> so that's Sunny's wire there you're looking at. Okay. And this is the wire that I'm using. I'll bring that up to close to it. As you can see, it is definitely thicker now. Uh, so I've been starting to use that. So I did the coils, uh, some of the coils with it, and I have to say it did improve matters. It improved the, uh, the efficiency. Um, as well, you can see, I've used it here, I've used it there, I've, and I've used it here as well, and on 15 meters. Um, that's original, that's original. That's not, that was the thicker stuff, but that's original. So, as I say, it's fine f for certain things, but this, I could not get this, this uh, up of 150. I used the, the thicker wire and I put more turns on it, but it was still struggling a bit. But, to be fair, I found this slightly larger toroid. Um, I, I, I haven't got the paperwork with me, but uh, I, I, if, if I had the paper, I'd tell you exactly what it is. Uh, it's a bit larger. But I've, I've measured it and the case will still fit. Um, that gives me exactly 198 micro henrys. But wow, did that bring the efficiency up? Um, about, about another 5 or 6% efficiency. Uh, so, of course, using the thicker wire, uh, okay, it's a bit longer because it's a larger, uh, a larger toroid. Uh, it still has a lower uh, DC resistance than this. So, um, I mean, I, I, I checked on that uh, uh, multimeter up there, which goes very, very low indeed. 
So it is. It, it, it's actually saving about point three of an ohm. Uh, of, a, of a difference, believe it or not, but between using the original Sunny's wire um, and in here. But now I've got this a uh, uh, figure of uh, inductance closer to what is required in the kit. So anyway, I've tuned it all up. I've got it all done. Uh, spent the afternoon on it, well, a bit more than the afternoon to be fair on it, uh, taking turns off here, adding uh, rewinding coils, adding turns on and so forth. And I'll show you the results now so um initially i've done all the calculations using the scope um for for this that's a, a 40 meg scope so that's fine it's been calibrated recently it's been checked out so i've did all the checks and that and i've uh, compared it with the s uh, the swr meter and the swr meter it's out a bit it's uh, it's not hugely out um but it is i have to say not as accurate as doing it with this so here's the results so there we go we'll go to Right, there we go. Now, and this is, don't forget, this is the brighter display we're using. And we're feeding it with exactly 12 volts on the dot. We, this is a Dyson battery. This is one of these up uh, uh, DC to DC converters. There's an 800 milliamp fuse in there. And the maximum current that this can deliver is adjusted to 800 milliamps, just in case we have problems. Now, 800 milliamps is more than this, this radio is ever going to take. But anyway, that's... Um, that's what I've done just for safety reasons. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. Uh, very high efficiency. Uh, we've got four uh, watts, 4.1 watts, and we're about 89%. And there we go. That's what it says. Well, sorry, 4.1 oh, watts on the display, but the meters tell me a bit less than that, right? And we've got a good efficiency. So we'll go to the next band. And there we go. Uh, so that is uh, 40 meters, 40 meters, and we've got 84, 85 percent, and we're actually just under six watts, which is slightly over five, slightly over five. Uh, the display is telling us 5.46, uh, which is probably more accurate. Okay. Um, now we go to 20 meters, <clears throat> and we've got 80 to 81 percent, a bit lower. Um, but that's to be expected, 80 to 81 percent, and we've got a power reading of about 4.7 watts there, and the display is quite accurate at 4.65. Okay, next is 15 meters, 21 megahertz, and we've got 82 percent, 81 percent, 82 percent, 4.29 watts displayed there. And about the same on the meter, about 4.1, 4.2 watts. So again, quite good with that. And lastly, we go to 10 meters and we have 81%, 83%. So we're getting good, really good uh, figures all the way through. And we've got five watts showing there and this is saying 4.95. So that's pretty good, pretty accurate. Um, we can go down uh, for those that... Uh, Oh, wait a minute, hold on. For those that, that want to use this on 11 meters, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Um, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five steps. So, okay, we'll go down to 27, five, five, well, five, 60. That's as near as, as, near as we need to worry about. <clears throat> and we are showing still 81 to 83% with five watts output, uh, slightly higher. I've actually tuned the coil so it's, it's more um, on the, the, the lower part of, of 10 metres rather than the higher part. Um, I, I find that, that uh, most of the activity, activity seems to be lowered down. So I've made it a slightly bit of a compromise between 11 metres and uh, 10 metres. Um, I've also set the... Uh, the part yeah the, the filter for the low end of 28 megahertz um as we get into 27 uh we, we don't forget we're going down by by a uh, 500 kilohertz here uh to, to to 560 so we're the the second harmonic rejection isn't actually as good at that uh, at that level at that frequency um but 
I can I can assure you that uh, everything's working fine. It's running cool. Um, I've checked it with the camera. There doesn't seem to be anything overheating. So it looks like a, a success, a total success, um, this conversion to the the classic bands. Um, I did have some issues to start with, as we know. Uh, quite a few issues with capacitors, getting the right types and so, so on. Um, and some of them were out of stock. But uh, after a lot of scouring about, I did find the, the, the ones that are required. So... That I was quite happy with that, so the job's done, and I'm I'm pleased with it. And uh, I've had a couple of quick QSOs with it, and everything seems to be fine. Um, but as you can see under here, uh, we have this larger toroid. Um, let me zoom in a bit more. Hang on, just bring it, bring this phone in a wee bit closer. Uh, it might be able to see better. As you can see, this uh, this toroid here is a bit larger. Uh, but uh, after doing a bit of careful measurements, the lid will just go on. If necessary, uh, they might be able to mount it some other way. I don't know. Failing that, we'll, we'll obviously have to go back to the smaller one and try and wind it so as we get uh, a, a, a reading round about what we're looking for. Um, you, if I zoom in a bit closer yet, you, you, you'll see... Uh, these are the components that I've replaced. I did my best. I'm 68 years old. I have uh, not particularly good eyesight for close work these days. I'm used to it. I've done it for years and years and years. I've started in electronics in 1970. So, to be fair, uh, I still have my skills, which I'm very, very, very thankful for, I have to say. But um, the eyesight can sometimes get a bit in the way, which is a bit of annoying for this. But I think we did not a bad job considering um, how we did this. The, uh, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out in the end up. So that's the job done. And uh, we're, next thing is we're waiting for a 3D case, which should be here sometime next week. And then we can get out and about and get on the air and start enjoying this one, along with its, uh, along with its small brother here. <laughs> this case was uh, printed for, for me from a friend unfortunately the writing didn't come out very well uh, I've touched it up with a pen but uh, it's not wonderful but I know where the controls are but the case only cost me three quid or three pounds to those people that have seen it abroad <laughs> so there we go thank you very much guys for watching these videos um, as I say I couldn't really do the, the the last build very well um, unfortunately it was just not possible the camera was using but I had a problem with that uh, and the only other thing I've got is this Huawei phone uh, which uh, does the job it does just what I want it to do so that's what we that's what we've done so thanks for for watching um, any comments you want to make or any questions yeah and uh, I have to say if you're really into these radios there is a very good for uh, forum um, set up by uh, DL uh, DL2MAN and P1NNZ, uh, Guido, and of course uh, Manuel there, uh, and it's very good, it gives you lots of good tips, and uh, uh, the forum is very good, there's also a Facebook page as well, and uh, I'm sure anybody buying one of these radios, whether they buy it as an assembled, or whether they buy it as a, a kit, uh, they'll have a lot of fun out of it, um, I certainly did. The only thing I, I'm, I do differently here, incidentally, by the way, is this is not the knob that comes with the uh, the kit. This is another knob. I've had quite a few of these lying around, actually. Goodness knows where from. Uh, but this this is a, a different knob. Uh, I cut the shaft on the uh, the uh, rotary encoder a wee bit. I took about a quarter of an inch off it. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's still a bit of a gap, as you can see. Uh, but it's it's not as big and kind of cumbersome as the, the, the original uh, knob that comes with the radio. Uh, and I've done the same with this as well. So we just, as I say, we're just waiting on the case, and uh, we'll have it all in, uh, screwed together, and so on. Uh, the other one I'm going for the the green one. Uh, no, sorry, the blue one I've gone for, uh, just for a, uh, so as I can uh, know which radio I've got. <laughs> and this is of course the white display, uh, whereas this one's the blue display. It's not been modified. It still runs from the five volt supply. This runs from a, a regulator. Uh, I didn't use a surface mount, I just had an ordinary uh, TO, whatever you call it, a small package and a little uh, decoupling capacitor here. Uh, there is one small issue with this, I have to say. On 28 megs, 10 meters, um, when you're turning the control, you can hear bzz, 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 bzz through it, and there's a continual slight hum, very slight hum in the background. If you press the uh, menu button and it goes to 
something that's, uh, that the display is not so highly populated, that noise goes away. I don't think it's I don't think it's an issue. As you bring the voltage down, the 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 input voltage down. Once it gets below about seven volts, that noise disappears. So I think that's all. It's because we're actually running it from a higher power. It's probably radiating more interference than it normally would do. Uh, it's fine on USB. It's fine uh, at five volt input. Just like this, you know, there's no noise from this. So I, I'm going to live with it. I'd rather have the brighter display than uh, the, the better noise. The better noise isn't that obtrusive. Uh, there might be some way of filtering it better, uh, which we may be able to cure in the distance. This display is marginally smaller than the original one I, as well, so the holes don't line up. So that I'll just be securing these two corners with a, a wee dabba uh, hot melt as well. The top's fine, it's soldered in, it's nice and strong that way. Uh, and the you know, angles in that are correct. So, as I say, a wee dab of, uh, a wee dab of uh, uh, hot melt should cure that. Okay, that's us. Thanks very much, guys. I hope this gives you some uh, information and I hope uh, that uh, you, you take up the idea of, of maybe making one of these because they're great fun. Um, I've, I've had a lot of, lot of success with it and I like the radio. Uh, and you can stick it in your pocket along with a battery uh, and, a, and a length of wire and a, and a ballon and Bob's your uncle. That's you on here. Okay, thanks guys. Take care. All the very best. Bye for now.